Architecture Codex. If you want to see more, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Timing is everything in architecture. Being an architect at the right time, in the right place, and knowing the right people to get a chance to build something extraordinary is complex enough. To try to make it an instant icon is even harder. And those who have designed for architecture fame, trying to build something novel for novelty's sake, often fail. But every so often, it all clicks. Perhaps a good example is the Atlantis built in Miami in 1982. Its boldness perfectly matched the Hollywood productions of Miami Vice and Scarface, who employed its strong visual image, making it Miami's Eiffel Tower, their gateway arch. When I drove by the building, I finally felt like I had arrived in Miami. Architectonica is an architectural firm founded in 1977 by five local architects, Bernardo Fort Brescia, Larinda Speer, Andres Duani, Elizabeth Palter Zyberk and Hervin Romney. Fort Brescia and Speer remain with the firm today. Shunning the usual proper nouns used to name a firm that established celebrity genius, the name Architectonica seemed as acutely designed as their buildings. It got to the point. It was unique and it became its own style. Today that Miami-based firm is a worldwide contender with offices and commissions across America and in Europe, Asia, and South America. In the Southern Florida region, they remain the architectural powerhouse. Long ago, I read how the founding partners of Architectonica decided to take on the most horrendous beast in all of the world of architecture, the real estate developer. Real estate development is a lucrative blood sport, a lot like cockfighting. It is not meant for the squeamish. It is not unusual for developers not to pay the last invoice from their architects, engineers, and contractors and force them to pursue it through legal means. And if you speak up, you not only will never get another job from them, but you may find yourself countersued on some minor issue. This is because real estate development is nothing but a horrendous nightmare of tight deadlines zoning regulations, logistic problems, fleeting, fickle client wants, and all the return on investment is long-term and slow if you are lucky. You have to survive a lot of rounds of pecking, scratching, biting, and kicking before you get any sort of reward. Architectonica went to the big roosters of Miami real estate development and show that for not much more than basic commercial building, you can add architectural excitement and identity to your projects. Looking at the Atlantis, you can see what I mean. The eye is drawn to a few figural elements, parts that stand out from the building. The hole in the middle is accentuated by the red spiral stair and the yellow columns. This is the immediate and at the time novel focal point of the building. Let's take a boring residential block and poke a hole through it. Then there are yellow triangular decks sticking out of another portion of the building. And there is the red triangle on top. These three pieces attract all the attention from a distance, giving the building its identity. And yet they are barely 10% of the facade, which is in the nicest possible way to say it, a boring speculative glass curtain box housing 96 units. From the other side, the glass box has added decks, but outlined them in bold blue. Again, using the same materials you might have used for any spec building, but with a boldness of color that makes the building distinctive. You have to buy the metal panels anyway, so why not make them bright blue? The entrance brings the bright colors and bold simple forms of the elevated facade highlights to the ground for the pedestrian about to enter. This adds almost no expense but adds so much architecturally. 
If you are a developer, this is good news. You simply do not have the deep pockets of a government project. Say something like Calatrava's path station at the World Trade Center Architecture Codex Number 8, which went $2 billion over budget. At some point, Architectonica graduated to feature projects with more expansive budgets, including skyscrapers. Stylistically, they seem to move in the same realm as the KPFs, the BIGs, or the SOMs, with distinctively modern, broad idea buildings, well executed, but finding it harder to be different, as everyone is doing the same thing. Lacking the Starchitect brand and celebrity personality whose idiom dominates, the firm is freer to treat each project uniquely, and so collectively, the portfolio has a lot about which to be proud. Having more money in your construction budget allows the architect to do more things. But good design, sensible design, beautiful design is not just the purview of the rich who can afford the most expensive projects. Good design should be applied to every project, no matter how humble the construction budget might be. And I know most architects are dedicated to that, finding the best way to build for the resources available. And most would justify that the expense of the architect, a good, sensible architect, should control the construction costs so that the project has the greatest chance of success. We architects are actually another expense to the owner, and we shouldn't feel guilty about that because we are, in fact, a service, a science, and an art. And I know when my kids were small, they ate almost every day, and that cost me money. And when all three were in college at the same time, I got a lot of sympathy, but no extra cash. The Atlantis won many local Miami AIA awards and also won Progressive Architecture Magazine's award. It has not won any national AIA awards, and Architectonica, as a firm, has not won the AIA gold medal or the Prixer Prize yet. Perhaps it is because these awards go to individuals, and Architectonica, as a firm name, would not be eligible. And if they gave the award to Bernardo Fort Brescia or Lorinda Speer, people might just ask, who? Perhaps there is another prejudice. These awards particularly favor big, expensive projects. You never see an award given to a building with the explanation that in spite of a budget lower than an ant's knee, the architect demonstrated excellent architectural skill, creating beauty, and of course would have done a better job if there was more money. And yet architects like Fort Brescia and Speer are really better architects. The Atlantis is a great design precisely because they worked within the budget and composed facades that used design elements subtly and to much greater impact. The Atlantis, as designed, is a great building, and more money would have ruined it. Architectonica may just be the Cary Grant of architecture. Grant was a competent professional, able to execute perfectly any assignment given, wildly popular among the people, but never recognized by the Academy with a performing Oscar. How many Oscar winners have gone on to oblivion and yet Cary Grant will never be forgotten. Architectonica is a local hero whose positive impact on Miami will be forever. And in reality, what better reward is there for an architect? I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.